Okay, next step is we're going to keep working on opening that display up. Let's go back in here. Now that we have a display pointer D, the next thing we need to do is get the screen. So S is gonna be our screen. Just give me the default screen for my display and store it in S. Next thing I'm gonna do is create a window, W. We'll set that equal to a simple window. For this, let's look real quick at the documentation. Here's our function, x create window or create simple window. So we want this one, x create simple window. We're gonna give it a display, which is a display pointer. That's gonna be our D that we have right there. Then you have the parent, the x, y position of the window, the width and the height of the window, the width of the border of the window, the border color, and the background color. If you didn't know what these were, you could look down here and get the types. You can look down here and get border specifies the border pixel value of the window. Background specifies the background pixel value of the window. Width, look down here. Width is specify the width and height, which are the created windows inside dimensions and do not include the created windows borders, okay? All right, so we go ahead and add these. We need, you know, I'm just gonna copy these so that we can fill them in, paste them in here. So display is D, the parent is just going to be another function called root window of the display and the screen. We're gonna give it a XY of 1010, let's give it a width of you know, 100, a height of 100. Border width, we'll just make one. And then for a border color, we can use a macro called black pixel. It's just gonna look up whatever the value is for a black pixel for the given display and screen. We'll do the same thing for the background. We we'll use a white pixel, display and screen. There, we've created a simple window. Build it again. Uh-oh, X was not declared. Made a typo. Oops. X is right here. This should be S. Oops. I accidentally saved this file as one, so I'm getting rid of that. All right, now let's build it again. That worked. Again, no window, but also no errors. Okay. Let's go back into main. All right, so we've created the display. We've gotten the default screen. We've created a simple window, but we still haven't shown it or exposed the window. We haven't asked the display manager to actually show the window on the screen. So in order to do that, we have to do a, a couple things. So first thing we gotta do is we gotta do X map window. We're gonna give it the display pointer and the window we just created, W. Um, and then we need to get the events. One of them is an expose event and handle that event. So we're gonna create an X event, E. We'll do a forever while loop, while one, which is always true, because one is non-zero. While there's a pending event coming from the display, we will get the next event from the display and put it into E. That's it, that's all we're gonna do. <laughs> okay, all right, let's go back into build, build it again. Oh, it's not called main, it's called X11 game. Okay, there's our window, see, right here. It is 100 by 100. Let's close it. Gives us a little error. We'll fix that in a minute. Okay. I'm not sure where the 1010 is. It seems like that's more than 10 pixels, especially since this is 100. So I'm not, I don't really understand the 1010. Let's run it again and see where it doesn't move. Let's put it at 00, zero and see what happens. Back into build, 
X11 game. Yeah, it didn't move. So I don't know what X and Y is supposed to be, but we can figure that out later if we care. All right, so in any case, now we're showing the window. Let's look back again at main. So we've created a display. We get the default screen for that display so that we can use it in these function calls here root window, black pixel, and white pixel. We create a simple window that gives us all the defaults and we give it all of its parameters, position, border width, color of the border, color of the background, and we get a number, basically window is a number. We hand the display and the window to map window to tell it, hey, map this window, which means show it. And then we have to get the events, we have to wait Basically, we just have to wait until the window displays, and we're going to use this stuff later. So we go ahead and add an event structure. We will watch for pending events in the display, and we will get that next event. Let's see what happens. Well, let's pause there. All right, so we're looking at this, and I'm wondering right now what happens here. Let's see. This is uh, X pending. Let's go ahead and put one in here. And just say iteration or something. And we should never get here. All right. Great. Okay, so we see that it's running iterations, but it's not calling the other. Let's go ahead and comment out iteration so we can just watch the that one. Yeah, so it's just sitting in the loop. All right, so let's do this. Let's get rid of this and this and this and this. does not show it. Interesting. Let's try that. There's never a pending event though. Hmm. <laughs> there it shows it. Okay. So I guess all we need is to call X pending event D over and over and over again. All right. Hmm. So I wonder if we even need it in a loop. What if we get rid of this? And it just exits, yeah, because it doesn't wait. We need to sit there and wait for it. But we could wait with get care. Aha, uh -huh, there we go. Um, wait, let's do that again. So we run it. We close the window and hit enter, and then it exits. Great. Oops. So all we really need looks like X pending D. Okay, close the window, press a key. Uh-huh. That's it, that's all we need. All right, 